Today's lesson is called Heidelberg. Majestic castle ruins above, winding medieval streets below. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. We're still in Heidelberg in Germany. It's a great little city with a really old university and a majestic castle on top of a hill that offers magnificent views of the streets below and the river below. And we mentioned last time, of course, that this city was spared the bombing in World War II, so lots of old buildings, including that castle and that old university. Are still standing. So, what are you waiting for? You've got to go check it out. There you go. What are you waiting for? And don't forget the world's largest barrel. The world's largest wine barrel, I should say, is located in Heidelberg. It can hold nearly sixty thousand gallons of wine. How cool! Anyways, last time we talked about those majestic castle ruins there found in Heidelberg. I think today that we're going to be talking about the winding medieval streets to be found there, though. So, hey, I'm excited. I like medieval streets. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and start reading from the second part of our article on Heidelberg. And yes, today we'll be talking about the winding medieval streets to be found in. Heidelberg. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a flash. Back down in the old town is another famous landmark, the Alte Brücke, which means old bridge in German. It stretches 200 meters across the Neckar River. Built at the end of the 18th century, it's relatively young in terms of Heidelberg's age. Okay, we're back in Heidelberg here, and of course, you like the old part of the town. That's why you're there to check out the old streets and the buildings and stuff like that. So, back down in the old town is another famous landmark, the Alte Brücke. Which means old bridge in German. Now we're not teaching German here, so if I pronounce that wrong, I'm not ashamed, because this is an English lesson. You'd have to talk to a German to find out exactly how to pronounce that. But in any case, you were up at the castle checking out that big wine barrel and the pharmacy museum. But now you've come down off of that hill, and you're in the old town. And in the old town, there's a landmark, and it's an old bridge. Now, a landmark, of course, is some kind of structure in a city. It could be a feature, it could be a mountain, it could be a building that is easily recognized, and it helps you find out where you are. A famous landmark in Taipei, of course, is Taipei 101, and there are various landmarks in different cities in the world, like say the Statue of Liberty or the Empire State Building in. New York City; those are famous landmarks. There you go. Here, a landmark is an important thing that might attract visitors or tourists and people like that. A landmark is an important thing, and very often, landmarks they help you locate yourself in some place. Anyways, here, this landmark it's famous for some reason. Apparently, it's famous because it's old. Yeah. That's why it's a landmark. Anyway, so before we were above, we were in the majestic or magnificent castle ruins there in Heidelberg. Now we are below, so we're back down in Heidelberg in the old town, and we're going to cross the Alte Brücke, which apparently you have to do if you go to Heidelberg. Now more on the. Alta Brücke, or the old bridge, it stretches 200 meters across the Neckar River, and get this, it is quite old. Not as old as Heidelberg University, but still quite old. Next, we learn that Alta Brücke was built at the end of the 18th century. So, built at the end of the 18th century, it's relatively young in terms of Heidelberg's age. So it. Is an old bridge, but compared to the rest of Heidelberg, like Heidelberg University, it's not that old, and that's why we've used this adverb relatively. Okay, relatively here means compared to other things. So compared to the other things in Heidelberg, this bridge 
Al Tabuka, the old bridge is actually young. Further, we have this phrase in terms of means in or with regard to something else. So Al Tabuka, the old bridge, is relatively young considering Heidelberg's age. Right. So, for example, I could say the music of the Beatles is relatively simple compared to music nowadays.、Uh, the music of the Beatles when it came out was, well, it was kind of new, it was kind of interesting, and maybe kind of complicated. But it's relatively simple compared to the music of today. So, yes, indeed, even though this bridge was built at the end of the 18th century. Or in the late 1700s, it's still young when you compare it to the city of Heidelberg itself. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on to the next part and listen first. On the old town side of the bridge is a monkey sculpted in bronze. It holds a round mirror in its left paw, and two little metallic mice scamper just below. It is said that rubbing the mirror brings luck, while those wanting to have children should stroke the mice. The statue you see today dates from 1979, but a monkey monument first appeared on the bridge in the 15th century. Pose with the statue for a perfect photo to remember your trip. 大家好，在第二部分我们看到的单词是动词 sculpt， 表示雕塑、雕刻。例如。It took only a few days for Mark to sculpt a mini Statue of Liberty out of wood. Mark 只花了几天就用木头雕刻出一座小型的自由女神像。如果在字尾加上 u r e， 就变成名词 sculpture， 一指雕像、雕塑品。举例来说 ，Some of the famous sculptures of Michelangelo are on permanent display at the Louvre Museum. 米开朗基罗其中几件著名的雕像在罗浮宫永久展出。再来，我们看到的单词是 bronze， 当名词时表示青铜、铜像或铜牌。举例来说 ，The Mao Gongding was made of bronze in the Western Zhou Dynasty。毛公鼎是在西周时期以青铜所铸造的。Bronze 当形容词时表示青铜制的或青铜色的。例如。There are many large bronze statues found all over the university campus. 大学校园里遍布许多大型青铜制的雕像。接下来我们看到的单词是 scamper， 做动词用，一直嬉闹地奔跑、逃窜、蹦蹦跳跳。所以可以说 ，small animals often scamper away when they hear strange noises. 小动物听到奇怪的声音时，常会四处逃窜。又或者说。The monkeys at Shoshan would scamper down the trees when they see tourists holding foods in their hands. Shoshan 的猴子看到游客手上拿着食物时，会从树上跑下来。Okay, everyone, we're back and we're still in Heidelberg, taking in the sights. And next, we're going to talk about monkeys. No, seriously, we're going to talk about A monkey, not a real wild monkey that is running the streets of Heidelberg. No, no, no. We're going to be talking about a monkey sculpture that is quite famous and that is found in Heidelberg. Interesting. I would not expect there to be monkeys in Germany, but in any case, on the old side, or at least on the old town side of that old bridge, you're going to see a sculpture of a monkey, and that sculpture is made out of bronze. Okay. So if we、uh, sculpt something, we make a sculpture. So sculpt here is the verb. To make a sculpture means to sculpt that sculpture. I could say this is a bronze monkey sculpture, or perhaps you could describe it as a bronze monkey statue. Okay, so there you go. If you're looking for a monkey sculpture in Germany, this is the place to go. Most people love monkeys. Now, bronze. What is bronze? I believe that's an Alloy. Okay, you take copper and you mix that together with tin, and you get bronze. And bronze is nice. It kind of looks yellowish brown. It's got a nice color to it. Now, bronze is not unlike brass, which is another alloy. By the way, when I'm talking about alloys, A L L 
O-Y. I'm talking about metals that have been formed by mixing other metals together. Anyways, we've got a bronze monkey or a monkey sculpted in bronze. Let's learn some more about this monkey. Apparently, it's quite famous. Now, apparently, it holds a round mirror in its left paw and two little metallic mice scamper just below. By the way, Roger, mm. I'm stumped. What is going on here? What is the significance of the round mirror and then the little metallic mice, or these mice made of metal, that are scampering just below the monkey? You have to go to Heidelberg to check it out, but that uh, monkey sculpture that's made out of bronze is holding a mirror in its left paw, which is the hand of an animal, a paw. Cats have paws, dogs have paws, etc. And these two metal mice are scampering below the monkey. To scamper just means to run around in different directions. I think they just look like they're scampering because they're part of this sculpture. So it is said that rubbing the mirror brings luck, while those wanting to have children should stroke the mice. Okay, so yes, indeed, if you want to have some luck, you rub the mirror that the monkey is holding, okay? Just like uh, at some temples in Taiwan, if you rub the tummy of the mila fu or whatever, that will give you some luck as well. So here, just rub that mirror and you'll have lots of luck, but... If you're a newly married couple or something and you're hoping to have some children, rub those mice instead. Well, there you go. By the way, if you stroke something, you kind of rub that thing gently. Yes, when you stroke something, you gently run your hand over something. Yes, when my daughter gets upset, I will stroke her head very gently, run my hand along her hair, and that'll calm her down and make her feel better. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. More on this statue. The statue you see today dates from 1979, but a monkey monument first appeared on the bridge in the 15th century. Interesting. Anyways, the Alta Brucke, it was built in the 18th century, but there have been monkey sculptures in this area for much longer. Okay, the one you see now, it's not so old, but the first monkey monument there, it dates back to the 15th century, which is pretty cool. Anyways, let's talk about what a monument is. A monument is a structure that is built and which is meant to remember something or to commemorate something. Yeah, monuments can be statues or buildings or pretty much anything else like those things. The only thing I can think of offhand is the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. It's kind of a tall tower and it was built to commemorate President Washington. So in this particular case, though, for some reason, they built a monument to commemorate a monkey in Heidelberg. Again, you'd probably have to uh, do some history research to find out exactly the history of that monkey. But it first appeared on that bridge way back in the 1400s. Pose with the statue for a perfect photo to remember your trip. And again, we're not talking about the monument. That monument is no longer there. But the statue was built in 1979. It would make a great picture. So, of course, when you want to be in a picture, you pose with something. Pose with that statue. And you'll always remember your trip to Heidelberg. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's listen to the third part right now. Romantic is not the first thing that springs to mind when one thinks of modern-day Germany, but Heidelberg's historical flavor has captured the hearts of many visitors. Over the centuries, the city has seduced famous poets and artists who were inspired by its medieval beauty to write poems and paint canvases in its honor. Like the figures of the past, perhaps you too will fall in love with Heidelberg. 第三部分，我们看到的是动词 seduce， 表示吸引、诱惑。例如 ，Most of the visitors to the Vatican City are seduced by its magnificent historical architecture. 大部分到梵蒂冈的游客都会被其壮观的历史建筑所吸引。又或者说 
Adrian is born to be a leader because he is capable of seducing ambitious young people to work for him. Adrian 天生就是领袖人才，因为他能够吸引有抱负理想的年轻人来为他工作。今天的最后一个单字是名词 canvas， 意思是油画布、帆布。举例来说 ，The canvas of Pablo Picasso was sold for millions of dollars at the auction. 拍卖会上，毕卡索的油画卖了数百万美元。这个字如果当形容词，则有帆布制的意思。例如 ，Gibson 先生每天早上总是会带着一个蓝色的帆布袋到教室来。英文就是 ，Mr. Gibson always carries a blue canvas bag with him to the classroom every morning. 好了。But Heidelberg's historical flavor has captured the hearts of many visitors. Yes, when I think of romantic places, I don't think of Germany. Okay, I think of Italy and France and stuff like that. Places like that. I don't think of Germany, but Heidelberg breaks the mold. It's the exception to the rule. Anyways. Romantic is not the first thing that springs to mind, or that's not the first thing that people think of when people think of modern-day Germany. Anyways, yes, if something springs to mind, this thing comes to your mind. It enters your thoughts. This is what you remember or think of at some point. Exactly. So yeah, when I think of modern Germany, I think of luxury cars. I think of driving really fast on the autobahn,、uh, big steins of beer at Oktoberfest, and big sausages and things like that. But something being romantic is not what comes to mind when I think of modern Germany. But hey, an exception is Heidelberg. It has captured the hearts of many visitors. And tourists flock to there in large numbers every year. Now, for over the centuries, the city has seduced famous poets and artists who were inspired by its medieval beauty to write poems and paint canvases in its honor. So, indeed, over the centuries, over hundreds of years. It has seduced poets and artists, and usually, if you seduce someone, that means you try to get someone romantically attracted to you. But in this case, the city has attracted or seduced famous poets and artists there. Because it's just so beautiful, it's so old. It's got that old castle. It's got those old streets, and you can be very inspired if you're a poet or an artist, and you can write those wonderful poems, and you can paint those canvases. Of course, a painter or an artist will paint on a canvas most of the time. Yeah, canvas. That's usually what painters paint on, and the cloth itself is called. Canvas. It's usually a sturdy piece of like cotton cloth or linen, and very often canvas is used for sails on a sailboat. You can use canvas to make those sails on a sailboat as well. Anyways, over the centuries, many poets and artists have fallen in love with Heidelberg, and when you guys go to Heidelberg, you'll realize why this is so. Why everyone falls in love with this. Place because Heidelberg, folks, is just that great. So, like the figures of the past, our article ends. Perhaps you too will fall in love with Heidelberg. And I don't know about you, Roger, but I've already fallen in love with Heidelberg. I'm gonna buy my ticket right now. Me too. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation. Here comes our Chinese teacher. 各位同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到 ，Back down in the old town is another famous landmark。回到下方的旧城有另外一个著名的地标。那这个句型它是用到地方副词片语移到句首的倒装句。
。那我们就来学习地方副词或是地方副词片语一道句首倒装句这种用法。好，当我们要强调表示地方的副词或者是副词片语的时候，或者是你的主词带有比较长的修饰语。那为了避免头重脚轻，可以把副词或副词片语移到句首来做强调，然后后面的主词和动词必须倒装。我们来看句型会更清楚。直述句的句型是主词加动词加地方副词片语，那么倒装之后的句型是地方副词片语加动词加主词。好，其中的动词呢，除了可以用 be 动词，也常常用 come、go、sit、lie、stand。Live 等等，其中这个 sit, lie, stand 不是指坐着、躺着、站着哦，而是指位于或者坐落于。举例来说 ，a stack of magazines lay on the bottom shelf of the bookcase. 书柜的最底层放了一叠杂志。那把地方副词片语 on the bottom shelf of the bookcase 移到句首，然后把动词 lay 移到主词 a stack of magazines 的前方，那就可以变成倒装句。On the bottom shelf of the bookcase lay a stack of magazines. 好，另外要提醒同学们两个重点。第一个是表示地方的介副词，像是 up, down, back, off, out, away 等等，也适用这样的倒装句型，例如。Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. 太阳出来了，把雨水都晒干了。好，第二个重点是，当句型中的主词是代名词，就不需要倒装了。像我们常听到 "Here comes the bus," 公车来了。那如果改用代名词 "it" 来替换这个 "the bus"。这时候句子就要写作 "Here it comes"， 就没有倒装喽。那再看个例句 ，She put on her coat and off she went. 他穿上大衣之后就出发了。好，课文第三部分的第一句提到 ，romantic is not the first thing that springs to mind when one thinks of modern day Germany. 句子里面的片语 spring to mind 是以事物来当主词，用来表达说脑中突然浮现某事物，突然想到某事物。那特别注意 spring 在这边它是当动词，有突然出现的意思。我们也可以用 come 来代替 spring， 变成 come to mind。顺便补充一个片语 cross one's mind， 可以用来表达某个念头或是想法闪过某人的脑海。例如 ，the thought has never crossed my mind。我的脑海中。从来没有闪过这个念头。好了，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Landmark. Big Ben is a famous London landmark. Relatively. Compared to chess, checkers is relatively easy to learn how to play. Bronze. Third place medals are made of bronze. Stroke. Hillary finds it so relaxing when someone strokes her hair that she falls asleep. Monument. The Washington Monument was built in memory of George Washington. Discussion starter starts now. Time now for our discussion starter for today, and here's the question. Does this article make you want to visit Heidelberg? Oh, of course! I would love to go there because it's old Germany, or you can find old Germany there. Okay, you can find the romance and the wonder that was old Germany. Remember, the rest of Germany was bombed. And bombed and bombed during World War II, and then rebuilt afterwards. So it doesn't have that same old world charm anymore. Well, even though old cities are nice and attractive, it's not the type of place I like to go, because I like modern cities. I like freeways. I like busy traffic. That's why I travel. Okay, everyone. With that. Today's article is now complete, but as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.